Hello everyone, Leslie Myrick here, interior designer and Nancy Gansacoffer's associate coach and curly haired friend of the beautiful curly haired Carlene LeMay of C2 Accounting. Welcome Carlene. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I always like our talks because numbers and interior designers often don't go together, but you <laughs> bring them in such a nice way that I don't know. I feel like you make numbers and bookkeeping so much more accessible and less scary. So as a designer, I am very grateful for that. And I know today we are talking about avoiding costly bookkeeping mistakes, specifically essential tips for staying organized. So I'm yes. really intrigued by this. I'm, I'm guessing the implication of the title is if you're not organized, you're going to screw something up. Yes. I hate to use the word screw things up, but let's say things won't go as smoothly as you <laughs> like. <laughs> let's put it that way. So one, thank you for saying that I make numbers and bookkeeping accessible um, because no one wants to feel like they don't know what's going on in their business. And our goal at C2 Accounting in particular is not just to do your books and give you reports, but really give you an opportunity to understand the numbers so that as you feel more comfortable, it is a learning curve, but as you feel more comfortable, you can then start using those numbers to grow your business, to make better decisions, to step in the CEO role that we all want to be. I love it. So what are some of these tips for staying organized that we need to know when it comes to our financials? So in business, well, first of all, a while back, Nancy and I did a call and I talked about the ultimate step-by-step um, -step guide to organizing your business finances. So if you do not have a bookkeeper and you're DIYing it, let me just start by saying, one, go back and watch that video. Um, <laughs> and two, go to our website and just download that. It just kind of tells you what to do every day, week, month, quarter, year, just so you at least have a guideline of like what to do. Um, because when people think about the cost of bookkeeping, they tend to think about how much money they're outlaying each month to pay the firm that they've hired. What they're not thinking about is that opportunity cost, like the cost of you not having time to go sell or not having time to grow your team or not having time to just be creative and live in the, in the creative juices to make more beautiful spaces. Um, so when, instead of always thinking about the cash out, think about what am I losing? And then also the cost of disorganization, right? Like if you don't know what's going on, you're losing something somewhere because you just don't know what things are. Um, so those are some, some costs that we want people to, to kind of avoid. Um, perspective shift because I feel like we often, because it is literally tracked as an expense, mm -hmm. we can think of it as an expense, but if you flip it in the same way we word things for our clients, investing in a bookkeeper is an investment in your time and business and sanity. That's how I look at it. Oh my gosh. Sanity. I'm happy to pay my bookkeeper and say, please solve this problem for me. Mm -hmm. And it does free me up to do those other things that only I can do as the business owner. Exactly. Yeah. We do bookkeeping, but we sell peace of mind. I mean, really, like that's what we do. Yeah. Um, our, our goal is to make sure our clients are not stressed about this part. I can't help everything, but yeah. about this part of your business, we want to reduce that kind of stress. Um, so the first thing is just kind of thinking about the, the cost of disorganization. Um, and, you know, we can give examples of people who, you know, they forgot to pay a bill because, you know, it wasn't, you know, just assume it's old school and they're just getting a paper copy. They put it somewhere and now it costs them twice as much because they have late fees and penalties. Just little things like that can really just start to add up. So that's the first thing. Like you look at the lost time and the cost of this organization. Um, number two, like what are the key strategies for streamlining your bookkeeping? It's 2024. Let's take advantage of all the tools, the AI machine is out there. And it's funny because, you know, bookkeepers are always like, whoa, is AI going to take our jobs? I'm like, yeah, no, it's not going to take Same chitter chatter <laughs> in our industry. Mm -hmm. I agree. It's, it can be a fabulous tool. It's it a tool. It's for evil. Let's be real. Yes. But it is a tool. It's not taking our jobs. It's just making what you do and what we do easier and more efficient and effective. Exactly. As designers, I mean, the reason someone hires you is because they can't get the vision from their head yeah. into their space. And they probably have tried several times. It never works. And they're like, finally, they understand the value that you bring. The same thing with us. I mean, could you do QuickBooks yourself? You can. I don't know why you'd want to. But... <laughs> 
I've tried. I don't want to, Carly. Right. Not and would you do gift. it well? Would you do it efficiently? So, um, you know, let's look at how can we automate that. Um, and if you are going to do it yourself, right? Let's yeah. talk about leveraging technology. Let's get away from pen and paper. Let's get away from a spreadsheet. Let's use at least QuickBooks um, right. to and take advantage of some of the built-in AI that QuickBooks has, even if you are a DIYer. Uh, mm -hmm. putting rules in place for automating those recurring expenses. So many times we buy from the same vendors, right? I mean, I work with interior designers. I see the same names for every client. Like, nope, that, that's cost of goods sold because 17 other clients have used <laughs> that same vendor. So let's set up some automation around that uh, just to make it a little bit easier. And then set clear financial routines. So going back to that guide, what should you be doing every day, every week, every month, every year? Um, make a money date. You know, a set that date, you a say? money date with yourself. Okay. Um, you know, once a week, if you're going to do it yourself, mm -hmm. once a week, you should be entering all your transactions into QuickBooks. I'm like, you know what? Get a glass of wine. Now, obviously, you don't want to go overboard, but... <laughs> The wine can soften the blow of looking the at wine can soften the blow, there. have some music, have a candle on. Like it doesn't have to be this like evil thing that you have to sit down and do. Like make it um what's the word I'm looking for? Will you make it an experience and you don't like regret it as much as if you know you make it pleasurable? Um that's one thing I would suggest, especially for people who are just like oh, I hate dealing with my numbers. Um and then so like every every week you should be categorizing. What people tend to forget is that every month you should be reconciling. So those and are so, those are two different things. Okay. So so categorizing is looking at what's in your financial software, like usually QuickBooks, and you're like, yep, this is for marketing and this is for you know bookkeeping and this is for whatever. And then at the end of the month, you get your statements, your credit card statements, your bank statements, and you are actually marking off like this matches, right? The good thing, again, going back to automation is that in QuickBooks, if you've already accepted all those downloaded transactions, it almost automatically does it for you, but it allows you to catch mistakes because things happen. If you've ever had your bank account stop syncing to QuickBooks and then you go back and sync it, what should happen is it should pick up from the last time that it synced. Does that always happen? Of course not. So there are times where you may have expenses that just did not end up on your books. But if you're not reconciling, you'll miss those. So categorizing so, is putting things where they belong. Mm -hmm. Reconciling is making sure everything is matches here. what the bank says. Yeah. So the QuickBooks is yeah. here and, and the two are the same. Awesome. Um, so here is a quick tip. If you are looking at QuickBooks and I don't have a screenshot to share today, but anyone who uses QuickBooks knows on that screen, it'll show um, the bank balance and the QuickBooks balance. If you see a huge discrepancy between those and you've already categorized all those transactions, something is wrong in your books. So I'll so say that again. To add to your like your money date as part of staying organized is mm -hmm. check, and I do say it again because it was important. Bank yeah. balance versus QuickBooks balance. Right. So if, if I've gone in and let's say my bank balance is five thousand mm -hmm. dollars and QuickBooks says I have fifteen thousand, right? So we have a ten thousand dollar difference, but I have a few transactions left to categorize. So I go in and I do my thing and I look back up, but QuickBooks says, you know, there's no more transactions for me to to categorize. But now my bank says I have seventeen thousand and bank you know, now QuickBooks says I have seventeen and the bank says I have five. And you're like, okay, that's a red flag. So if you are doing it yourself, stop, get some help and figure out why there is a difference. Because if you are taking those numbers, yeah. giving them to your tax accountant at the end of the year, and there are a lot of tax accountants do not go back into QuickBooks. They don't verify what you give them. They really do believe that what you're giving them is valid information that you could either overstate your income, pay more in taxes understate your income and if you get audited now you owe what you didn't claim <laughs> so there's so many reasons why you want to make sure that this is up to date and we haven't even gotten into like let's understand how to make decisions but like just the core yeah. basics of staying um compliant that's just reason enough to do that 
Okay. I love this yeah. date idea. Double checking that QuickBooks is matching up, making sure weekly that you are doing your reconciliation. Nope. You're doing yeah. your categorization. Yes. <laughs> and then monthly we are okay. doing reconciling. Okay. Exactly. So that's a good start. And then just to gloss over a few others, and I think we'll have to make this a part two because we don't want to overwhelm people. We don't want to give them too much homework to do, but I will say one other mistake that we constantly see is neglecting their accounts receivable. Now, if they're following Nancy's advice, they should be getting all this money up front, right? <laughs> Correct. But. And I love that you pointed that out because yes, we absolutely teach in Profit Insiders Academy that you get paid up front, whether it's design fees or for product, you are mm -hmm. not paying. But we also understand that not every designer is there yet or exactly isn't in Nancy's world or doesn't have that mm -hmm. in their um, in their process. So right. I can't well, see the goal is money people owe you, correct? Yes, exactly. And when you're starting out and you're you just want clients, you are definitely going to be a bit more flexible mm -hmm. with your pricing and how you do business until you can feel like you can you can say, no, this is how we do things. Yes. Um, so two things I want to say about invoicing and neglecting the invoicing and then the cost that it occurs. Number okay. one is actually not invoicing especially for time, people will invoice for products pretty, yes. pretty easily because they have to pay that. Um, and if you don't, if you're tracking your hours, I have seen too many interior designers get behind mm -hmm. and billing for their time because they're so busy. So we have to figure out how can we make this process easier? Sometimes I think people get into their own way <laughs> and make the process more complicated. So definitely make sure that you are finding a way to quickly invoice so you're not losing money. Mm -hmm. um, and then two, making sure you're, you are tracking those receivables if you have them um, and getting paid for them. I've seen too many interior designers that have a lot of overdue receivables. And it could be maybe you created it you know, three versions of an invoice for client Jane Doe to pick from, and you just never went back and voided the other two, right? I mean, I've seen, I don't know why would people do that, but they have, I've seen that happen. Here's the problem. If you're billing for products, in most states, very few states where you don't have to do sales tax, you're collecting sales taxes. A lot of states say that you have to pay sales taxes when you bill, not when you get paid, Okay. When you bill, you bill the client. So you might not even place the, the order yet. Right. Exactly. Okay. So if you are creating a $20,000 invoice and there's $3,000 worth of sales taxes and you, it's time to, to pay sales taxes, you have to pay that. But if you haven't collected, mm -hmm. now you're running in the negative when it comes to cash. Yeah. So be super careful. Understand your sales tax obligations so that you're making really good decisions around your accounts receivables. That's great. Yeah. So we'll leave it there. I don't want to overwhelm people because numbers can be overwhelming. I think that's enough for today. What do you think? I think it's great. <laughs> and I think the, the key takeaway that I'm getting from this, Carlene, is make this a habit and mm -hmm. I would go further and say, block it on your calendar. Yes. I couldn't always remember to do my billing and end of month stuff, but I have an Asana task last day of every month. Here are the five things you yes. I need to do to wrap up the month. I need to do this transfer and send this and update this spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. And that's what these tools, these calendars, task management systems, mm -hmm. they can really help with this kind of thing because it is a lot to keep on your mind. It is a lot. You need to find ways to stay organized for me, that's what works really well. You might have a different system, but the point is you've got to look at this weekly. If you're not, if you're doing your own books, right. if you have a bookkeeper, I think monthly is usually pretty standard. Right, because the bookkeeper is going to be the one looking at it more frequently. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But if you're doing your own books, you need that weekly money date. And I mean, it, it'll be what? If you do it weekly, depending on the size of your firm, it can be 15 minutes. I can't imagine right. it always, it could take hours. Let's be real. Well, you know, in the beginning, be yeah, in, in the beginning, because maybe you're behind, but once you get caught up and once you get into the habit, that yeah. muscle memory thing kicks in, you're right. It could be 15 minutes and you're like, why, you know how, when you're like, when you're dreading something and you keep putting it off and when you finally do it, you're like, that was not that, that wasn't bad. so bad. Why yeah, didn't I just it, do it sooner? When it's all in your head, yeah. all these stories, and then you just look at the facts and go, okay. So I love that, Carlene. I, I, it's so important. 
to stay organized because it will cost you time. It and will money. cost you time and money. Insanity. Oh my gosh. Just the, <laughs> just the mental, good. like, yeah, the mental load, especially as, if, as women, because, you know, a lot of our audience is going to be women. We have enough mental load already. Yes. So why add more to your plate? Let's try to take some of that off. Like you said, I too have reminders to do things. I use Profit First as, you know, mm -hmm. Profit mm -hmm. Insiders talk about Profit First. I have my reminder that says on the 10th and 25th to do my transfers. And I will forget if I don't have a reminder. You have to do whatever's going to work for your brain, figure it out and then do it consistently. I love it. And this will save you time, money, and mistakes, just yes. like we do for our clients. We've got to be working on this on the back end of our business. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So again, if you haven't um, watched our video about the ultimate step-by-step -step guide, go back and watch it, download it. It could help you. Um, and if you're ready to stop DIYing it, we'd love to take a look and, and have a chat. I love it. And that's definitely a first hire we recommend for most designers. There's always a point where, you know, we're all bootstrapping it to start. That's what you do. Mm -hmm. And often books are not where our strength lies. And so that was my first hire many years ago. And it's often many people's first hire. And it is the biggest, most wonderful relief <laughs> to just say, you got this. I don't yes. have to think about it anymore. Awesome. Yes, well, thank you, Carlene. Go to her thank website. Thank you so much. C2-ACCTG.com. Yes. C2 Accounting with no vowels. And yes. That's a great free resource for you. I hope you go download it. Learn from this wizard of dollars. We are grateful to have here again this month. And Carlene, we'll see you again next see month. See you next time. All right. Take care, everyone.